Hello folks, Everchanger here, and welcome back to more Pokemon Blaze Black 2. Last time we did some serious training in preparation for Roxy, the second gym leader of the game. And this time we are going to be hopefully taking her on. Did I go a little bit overboard on the training, or did I not do enough? I actually don't know, so this will be a bit of an adventure for us. So let's head down here into the gym. This is a Pokemon gym, and it's also a rock club. The gym leader and the others are practicing inside, but please feel free to challenge all of them. Oh, you'll need to stay hydrated. Here you go. And we get yet another fresh water, which is super awesome. And now, I welcome you to one of the very, very few localization edits made to this game. This is edited music. This was not this way in the original game. I'm running the PA. I balance the sound in the venue so it's easy to hear. Are you a trainer? So does that mean you're thinking about the type balance of the Pokemon in your party? I've tried to. The gimmick with this song in the Japanese version was that this gym leader is a very big fan of the Pokemon Coughing, which name is Dogars in the Japanese version, so she would chant D-O-G-A-R-S, Dogars. They changed it in the English version of the game to a seven letter word instead of a six letter word. I have no idea why they didn't even change it to Poison, which also has six letters in it. But you're asking me to explain localization changes, which Pokemon has always proved to be impossible. But anyway, we can't go ahead and challenge the gym leader immediately. Because it's too loud, she can't hear your voice. We have to fight all of the gym trainers first to make them stop playing their music. Get in my way and I'll knock you out. Stay out of my way and I'll knock you out too. So we got two guys to fight. So this is the second gym in a row where you're required to fight all of the gym trainers, which is interesting, I suppose. Got a Grimer coming out. Now, let me introduce you to pretty much my strategy in this gym until something goes wrong, and that's to spam Return. Might seem a little bit cheap, but Return is actually quite good. Like, look at that. That did a lot of damage. Of course, it's going to be throwing a Disable our way, which is unfortunate. But yeah, Return is quite strong, especially when your Pokémon likes you a lot, so... I'm planning on using that as much as I possibly can, because she's got some really devious strategies that... Hopefully I'll be able to make sure that she doesn't get off, period. I'll be sure to explain them as we go, but yeah, she's got some evil strategies that we're really going to want to watch out for. It also sort of makes Lucario steel typing a double-edged sword, as I'll get into later on. But anyway, let's throw another return, and yeah, that does a lot of damage, you see that? That's mainly why I taught everyone return, because it's quite a high power move, considering this point in the game. Alright, that brings down his coughing, which means he should only have one left. It is a Nidorino. Okay, this guy's got good taste. Probably means I'm going to be getting poisoned from Poison Point, because I'm pretty sure Steel types can get poisoned that way. I think. I'm actually not entirely sure. Well, it didn't happen to us there, and we actually managed to pull off a one-shot, which surprises me. Hendar gets level 18, which is awesome. And I think now that Hendar is level 18, I am going to be switching this item. We're going to move it over to... Nidorino, I think. Alright, time for the next guy. If you listen closely... The music is missing the beat, which is awesome. I can always be straight and honest with myself whenever I'm playing the guitar, having a Pokemon battle. Awesome. So, once we bring down this person, it should be just Roxy playing music, which means it will be quiet enough for her to hear our challenge. Really weird gimmick, I know, but I think it's pretty neat. Alright, we got a Stunky coming out here, which is one of those interesting Pokemon that I sort of forget exists sometimes, just because you don't see it very often. It's just a 
niche, sort of okay-ish poison type from Diamond and Pearl. It's funny, a lot of the Diamond and Pearl Pokemon don't really get a whole lot of time in the limelight. It's probably because there aren't very many of them, because a lot of Diamond and Pearl Pokemon, like a quarter of them, are evolutions of old Pokemon. And then there's another big chunk of them that are legendaries. We got a Badoo coming out, which is interesting. I think we're going to switch into Houndour. See if we can play that Fire-type weakness to our advantage. Alright, it's only level 16, which is surprising to me, considering the other guy, if I remember correctly, had stronger Pokémon. I might just be remembering wrong, though. Bring that down super quick with a Fire-type attack right there, and now we have a Nidorita coming out. I think I'm just gonna keep in with Houndour just to see how far we can get. Alright, how much does Return do on Houndour? It does a decent amount, actually, which is pretty nice. Houndour is one of the lower leveled members of our team at the moment, but it looks like it is friendly enough with us for Return to be a pretty viable move, which is awesome. And we don't get poisoned, which is also awesome. We're gonna escape Poison Point entirely? We are. Very cool. And Nidorino gets level 18. Very awesome. And we've defeated both trainers, but I think before we fight Roxy, I'm definitely going to want to heal up our team, because this is one person we really don't want to mess with. What do you have to say? That's a gym leader for you. She really brings out the charms of her Pokemon, but she's too wrapped up in what she's doing here. Yeah, I don't... I don't know. Roxy's kind of an odd gym leader for me, because there's this one episode of the Pokemon anime where she let Ash use six of his Pokemon versus three of hers, which I suppose is the way it is in the game usually. But I thought that was really a sort of anticlimactic way to give Ash his eighth gym badge, because they faced Roxy instead of the eighth gym leader from the original Black and White. Really not sure what the motivation was behind that position, the, that decision, besides um, cross-promotion and all that. But yeah, it seemed kind of weird to play up Roxy as the super strong gym leader in the TV show, too, I guess? I don't know, maybe they just knew that she was super difficult in the game. Alright, we're going to switch this over to Floppy, and I'm going to move our team around a little bit so that everything is in order of... That's the way I sort of order it. I order it starter Pokemon, and then by level, and then by HP. That's pretty much how I order my Pokemon when it comes to just casual playing. I'm pretty sure that's something you've seen in my Liquid Crystal in the past. If you haven't watched that, go watch it. <laughs> I'm still very, very proud of myself that I made 105 videos on that game. Seriously, I am quite blown away that I actually managed to do it. But anyway, after this whole week of preparing for Roxy, let's challenge her. Get ready! I'm gonna knock some sense out of ya! That's one interesting thing. Gym leaders don't really monologue in the newer games now, do they? That was just one text box. Anyway, we are challenged by Gym Leader Roxy. And she opens up with a Trubbish. Just saying, this Trubbish is pretty insane because it's holding a normal gem and it knows either self-destruct or explosion, I forget which. Which means if this thing can get that off, it's pretty much bye-bye to whoever's in front. Which is why I have Servine in the front, because we are not very strong against poison types as a grass type, so I figured if anyone's going to get blasted away, might as well let it be Servine. Alright, it's laying down toxic spikes, which is really bad. It's got two layers now, which means anyone who gets sent out from this point will be badly poisoned, which means they'll lose, I want to say, 1 16th and then 2 16th and then 3 16th of their HP every turn. Which means if you don't heal, you're going to get 1, 3, 6, 10, 15, like 6 turns tops. And that's if you don't take any damage, so... It's a pretty dangerous combination. Alright, we're going to try Vine Whip here. And it looks like we actually managed to take it out without it bringing out its explosion. 
but it knows it has a aftermath as its ability, which is not good. Up next is coughing. I think I'm going to keep battling here, just because I think switching would poison someone, and that's not something we want to have happen. This coughing has a fire gem, and it also knows flame burst or flame charge or some decently powerful fighting type attack, which is also boosted by that fire gem, which, whew, it's bad, and it's probably going to try and launch it as soon as possible here, or it's just going to use Fetishock. That's the problem with Lucario, that steel typing gives it immunity to poison damage, but it gives it weakness to this fire attack, which is something I was very, very concerned about. Alright, so Servine's down, which is not the best thing to happen in the world, I'm going to send in Electric to see if I can get a Paralysis off. We're going to get badly poisoned. One cool thing they added, I believe in this generation, was the letters in the little poison block over there, right under my name, are purple instead of white. If they're purple, that means it's badly poisoned status, which is pretty cool. Got a Paralysis off, which is really good, and now it's launching in a Venoshock. Can we take it? Oh my word, that did a lot of damage. Okay, I think we're going to send in Meterino, because I'm pretty sure it can't get poisoned from these spikes. Okay, if you send out a poison type, it dispels the toxic spikes. I had a feeling that was the case, but I wasn't entirely positive, so it's good to have that confirmed. Let's see how much damage return is going to do here. Decent amount. That was a critical, though. Oh yeah, it also knows Dark Pulse for good measure. Dark Pulse is quite strong, so going to want to keep out of that way. Luckily, it looks like she is out of potions because we were able to take down her coughing even though it was in the red. Up next is Krogunk. I'm going to keep in Nidorino for this because this is one of the main reasons I brought Nidorino. This thing is part fighting type. And I believe it also has a fighting gem and a fighting type attack. I don't remember which. But yeah, we do not want to send Lucario out against this thing because it's yet another reason that Lucario's steel typing is actually going to work against it in this fight. So we gain immunity to poison, but we gain weakness to fire and fighting, which is bad. Alright, I'm going to try Return just in case it actually does more damage. Alright, it's using Venoshock against us. One thing that is important to note is this thing has an ability of Dry Skin, which means if you hit it with a Fire-type move, it will actually take additional damage, which is why I brought Hound Hour into this fight. But it looks like we're actually going to bring it down without having to bring out Hound Hour, which is good. But her last Pokémon is Whirlipede, which Hound Hour is also good against. So we're going to switch into Hound Hour over here and see what we can do. I'm not counting on Hound Hour to survive too terribly long because this thing actually knows Bulldoze, which is a decently powerful ground type attack. Which is, of course, something Lucario is also weak against, so. Could get a little bit interesting right here. Let's try Ember. Alright, first thing off, we're not fast. what I say? Bulldoze? I meant Steamroller. Or did I? I thought Steamroller was a ground type attack. Anyway, let's try this, and... Ooh. Steamroller is not a ground-type move, though, because that was not super effective. Anyway, that sucks a little bit, but I think we're going to be sending in Floppy to try and get another Paralysis off on this thing. That's one thing I'm pretty impressed about. A lot of our Pokémon are getting screen time in this fight, which means this woman is serious business, because I did a lot of training. Oh, wow, we got a static off, which is awesome. Kind of nullified Thundershock right there. Let's try Return. I mean, Thunder Wave, excuse me. But anyway, Return does minimal damage from the looks of it. Alright, hopefully this will do okay. It actually had a Citrus Berry, which is unfortunate. That heals back, I believe, 30 hit points, which is a lot more than the Oran Berries we've been seeing up to this point, so that's unfortunate. 
And of course, Fluffy is also badly poisoned, which means this is going to come down pretty close to the wire. I guess I'm mistaking about the typing of Steamroller, because I thought it was a ground-type move, but apparently it's not. A little bit of a, of a mistake on my part. Um, we're going to send in Nidorino just to see if we can get some pecks off on this thing, because this thing is part Bug-type, which means it is weak to peck. How much does that do? Decent damage. It's using agility, which will make it faster, but I'm pretty sure it's already faster than us, so... Oh well. Alright, this is going to be close. Oh wow, it's using agility again. Oh right, it's paralyzed, which means we're probably faster, unless it's finally got speed advantage on us, which it actually doesn't, and... Ooh. And it hits us with a steamroller. Ouch. That's going to bring down Nidorino, and yeah, as you can see, if we hadn't done the training last episode, we would be screwed, because I'm down to my last Pokémon. Which isn't too big of a deal, because I think we have this in the bag, but it just goes to show that Roxy is no joke. By far. Alright, let's use Return. An embodiment of Lucario's evolutionary method. And down goes Whirlipede. Wowie! And we defeated Leader Roxy. Wait, I was right in the middle of the chorus! Haha. <laughs> huh. <sighs> what are you doing losing, Roxy? Well, I guess that means you're strong. This stinks, but I gave it everything I had, and I feel revitalized and refreshed now. Here, proof that you beat me. David received the Toxic Badge from Roxy. Two badges. Now Pokemon up to level 30, even Pokemon you got in trades, will realize how good you are and won't ignore your commands. Also, here, use this TM. And we obtained TM09 Venoshock, which is a very, very good move, so that's much appreciated. TM09 is Venoshock. It covers the target in a special poisonous liquid. Even better, if your target's already poisoned, it does double damage. Haha, <laughs> it almost packs too much of a punch. And with this victory, we also have this, which is an interesting event that they added in Black and White 2. Hey, you! I felt like you were something special during your battle with Roxy. Please come with me to Pokestar Studios. You're going to Pokestar Studios? Oh, I forgot! The old man! I have to get him back to work as captain! Yes, there's a lot of stuff happening right here. It would seem that, if we recall from a few episodes ago, Roxy's father is the captain of the boat that lets people leave the city, but unfortunately he is preoccupied with doing stuff at Pokestar Studios. So I think we're going to want to go check that out, but I think first things first, we're going to want to heal. So let's head right on in here. Man, that was a rough fight. Seriously, I wasn't quite sure if we were going to make it there for a bit, but it looks like we actually pulled through with little trouble, which is awesome. But anyway, going into Pokestar Studios actually causes a little bit of a chain of events to sort of trigger, and you have to go through tutorials and things like that for what Pokestar Studios actually is. So I think in the interest of time and the fact that we've had a couple of very long videos recently, I think instead of heading off to Pokestar Studios this time, we are going to be heading there next time. So now that we have defeated Roxy, that's what we're going to be doing going forward. I will see you guys next time.